Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Keith bringing you another relevant revelation by podcast to keep you enlightened and to keep you encouraged in your daily walk with Christ. This is 2014. In today's podcast, I'll be reading part one from my book titled Disease Carrier. Don't be a host for sin. This podcast is part one of a two-part series that I'll be doing on my book titled Disease Carrier, Don't Be a Host for Sin. Sin is the reason for spiritual sickness. Sin is the reason for spiritual sickness. Sin needs a host in order to survive. Without a host, it dies. Back in the Garden of Eden, the devil, who had already been evicted from heaven and banished to earth, found a host for his sinful ways. Sin is the reason for any spiritual sickness. It corrupts our moral character and can destroy our physical body. The hope is that we don't have to let it do either. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But the Bible also teaches us a way out of sin. It's called spirit and truth. If we surrender our lives completely to God and live totally in the spirit and always tell the truth, we have come close to banishing sin from our lives and our bodies and we are much closer to God than we can ever imagine being. When Jesus sacrificed his life for us by dying on a cross, he not only opened the door for us to receive the free gift of salvation, but he closed the door on sin and sickness in our lives. Jesus' resurrection broke the hold sin had over us. Because sin and sickness has no power over Christ, it has no power over Christians. Sin and sickness still exist, but it does not rule over us. It is by the stripes, the very stripes that Jesus took that we are healed. But to enjoy it and to walk in it, we have to live whole moral and honest lives. It's the only way that we can live and walk in this wonderful truth. I'll say it again, sin or sickness, sin and sickness has no power over Christ. Therefore it has no power over Christians. Through the blood of Jesus, as a sacrifice for us, once and for all, his death and resurrection did away with the power of sin and sickness and death over our lives. And as Christians, we simply have to believe it and walk in it. I'm reading from part one. This is part one of a two-part series that I'll be doing on my book called Disease Carrier. Don't be a host for sin. Unrepented sin can cause physical sickness. In the mid-1980s, I was in a deep state of depression because of many years of tragedy that had occurred in my life. In the mid-1980s, I was in a deep state of depression because of many years of tragedy that had occurred in my life. So much so that I turned my back on God for 17 years. Anytime we turn our back on God who gave us life, gives us his breath to live, eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to speak and eat with, and a myriad of other things that most of us take for granted, it is sin. For 17 years I lived in that state of depression and in a state of unrepented sin against God. In 1980, when my dad passed away, that's when it started. 
I left the church and vowed not to go back. But in 1997, my wife invited me to a revival, a church revival, where one of the pastors from my youth was preaching. I knew then that it was time to surrender, time to repent, and time to get back in good graces with God. And I thank God that he had not turned his back on me. He was right there waiting all the time. And I was like the prodigal son who came home after messing up my life so badly and wallowing in the mud so long that the only place I could go was home to the safe, loving, forgiving place that is God's arms. The moment I surrendered and the moment I repented, and the very moment I walked into the church after 17 years, I broke down and cried for two hours. I was releasing 17 years of unrepented sin from my life and being given an opportunity to be forgiven at the same time. The depression I had lived under was no more. It immediately vanished. And the healing that God had stored up for me all those years was right there waiting for me to simply repent. Sin doesn't stop your anointing but unrepented sin will stop you. Do you have sin that you have not repented for? You need to do it now. Again, sin doesn't stop your anointing, but unrepented sin will stop you. Unconfessed sin. The book of Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, He who conceals his sins does not prosper but he who confesses them finds mercy. In everyone's life, sin exists. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And walking around with unconfessed sin causes us to be spiritually weak and physically sick. Sin weakens our spirit and our physical body. So every unconfessed sin we walk in takes spiritual strength from us that we need in order to fight off the sin in the first place. By nature, our flesh is weak. Our physical bodies need spiritual strength to stay on top of the battle and eventually win the war between our flesh and our spirit. Unconfessed sins, such as lying, cheating, stealing, murder, fornication, adultery, and a range of others, causes physical sickness and disease to come upon us and rest there until the sin has been confessed. It is only when we have confessed our sins one to another that we are healed. Our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ paid the price for all sins of our past, sins of our present, and sins of our future. And knowing that, Walking around with unconfessed sin is like holding up a banner saying to Christ that I did not want your help. And that is ludicrous and insane because without Jesus, we remain dead in our sins and face certain death and eternal damnation. And who wouldn't want to be delivered from that? This is Pastor Keith, bringing you another relevant revelation by podcast to keep you enlightened and to keep you encouraged in your daily walk with Christ. Today's podcast has been part one of a two-part series that I'm doing from my book titled Disease Carrier, Don't Be a Host for Sin. May God bless you. And may he keep you today and always in Jesus' name. Amen.